who stopped by Pete's Garage. Well, it's time to take our 350 over to the dyno and run it. Now, if you have an engine that you're going to take and have a dyno test, and I have some tips for you to help make best use of the time on the dyno. Because you don't want to spend time and money working on your engine. You're there to test it, not to work on it. So this is what you want to do. First of all, oil. Make sure you fill it up, you have an oil filter on there, and you run your oil pump mechanically with a drill mortar or whatever you can for at least a couple minutes. And have someone turn the engine over while you are running the oil pump. So you are sure that oil is evenly distributed throughout the, the entire crank, rotating assembly, and on top of the engine, the valve train, rocker arms, valves, the springs, etc. You want to have the engine completely lubricated. The worst thing you do is have a dry start at the dyno and you spin a bearing instantly. So oil, number one. Secondly, make sure that your timing is set correctly. Get piston number one or cylinder number one at top dead center on a compression stroke and make sure your timing point or the pointer on the uh, distributor, your rotor, is pointing to number one cylinder on the cap. That way you're sure when you start up you're not 180 degrees out of phase. That happens a lot. Then make sure you know which direction your distributor turns. Does it turn clockwise or counterclockwise? And make sure your wires are on correctly. Check them once, check them again, check them a third time to make sure you have the firing order right because you don't want to spend time rerouting wires, figuring out what the firing order is, and wasting your time working on your engine. Now, uh, belts. What, what belts should you have on your engine when you take it to the dyno? Really the only belt you need is to go from the crank pulley to your water pump. That's all you really need to run. So you can get a, a small belt to cover those two. Now if you have a very big elaborate engine with a serpentine belt that drives uh, your water pump, the air conditioning, your power steering, whatever you have on there, a vacuum pump, and you have this big serpentine belt, well, you kind of got to use it if you, if you want to have all that stuff on there. And if you have an engine that's fuel injected, you want to have your alternator on there. The alternator is going to provide extra current for all the stuff that's going to draw power, like the fuel injection system, the computer, all the sensors, that takes power. Usually when you go to a dyno, it just runs on 12 volts. They start it up, you have 12 volts power to run the coil, and that's all you need. But when you have a fuel injection on there, it draws power and it can drop below 12 volts. And that's, what, and that's not what you want. So if you have a fuel injected engine, you're going to need to have an alternator on there with a, the belt that goes around, the crank pulley, the water pump, and the alternator at least to run those three things. Now any other accessories, any heat shields, uh, any other elaborate things that go on the outside of your engine, leave them off and leave them home. If you do have to work on the engine for some reason, for example, you might have to adjust a valve, uh, a, a rocker arm. You might have to do something, you might have a leak and you want to work on it. You, again, you don't want to spend your time and your money taking accessories off and then have to put them back on to run it. Leave them off, leave everything home. Go to the dyno bare bones minimum, okay? So, oil. Make sure you have your spark set up right. Make sure you know what needs to uh, be hooked up for your engine, coil, what power you need, and whatever the dyno person is going to need. Now you want to talk to them ahead of time, make sure you know what they're going to need so that you get there and you have everything you need to put it right on. Because it takes time to put it on the dyno, it takes time to set it up, and it takes time to get it started running, set the timing, and then do a few pulls, and then take it off. So, like I said, you don't want to spend your money working on your engine. So let's take this engine to the dyno and we'll see how it works. Right. So let's see what it does. Okay, as you can see, the engine ran awesome. Really, really happy with the results. 
We hooked it up, put the fuel on, got the power on, made sure the EFI system was all tuned up right, and it started right up. Now, as soon as you start your engine with that EFI system, the sniper system on there, the coolant has to get to 160 degrees. Once it gets to 160 degrees, the computer takes over and it starts learning, it goes into learn mode, it goes into closed loop learn mode, and it starts learning as you go through the RPM range. Uh, now, I didn't make a video of that, setting that thing up, because uh, first of all, I told, as I said at the beginning of the video, you're there to run your engine, not to work on it. And it would take me half an hour or so to make a video, if not longer, and I'm paying those guys, and I don't want to pay them to stand around and do nothing. They're really busy. they got a tight schedule. They have other engines to do, and I don't want to stand there and make videos on their time. So I made it as short as possible. But the, the uh, Holly website does have some fantastic tutorials. There's a guy on that who they installed. They show you how to install and how to, how to run it and how to do all the wizards. And, and it's really fantastic. It really is pretty simple. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to uh, get one and put it in yourself. Now, the one thing we did call Holly about, and we called because uh, we had some concerns about the way the system was performing, and they verified it was performing as designed. This carburetor has, a, or this distributor has a vacuum advance on it. And we noticed that we weren't getting any vacuum advance until the engine was hitting about 3200 RPM. Now when, you, when you're try, running a vacuum advance, you want to try and have vacuum advance as soon as you stomp on it. You want the, the, advance, the, the timing to advance. And we weren't getting that. So we called Holly Technical Support and they verified that the orifice that supplies vacuum for the distributor, for the vacuum advance, is not going to kick in until around 3200 RPM for this engine. So it is what it is. You can't change it. That's the way it's designed. You could, of course, hook it right to the manifold vacuum, but then you have vacuum all the time, and when you go to stomp on it and the vacuum goes to zero, you won't have any advance and it'll bog down. So you've got to use that port that is designed for the vacuum advance. But it still ran great. Still really happy with it. That's the only issue we had that we had to verify just to make sure it was okay. Now, the contest. We had a lot of great guesses. A lot of you guys out there have a lot of... Uh, uh, a confidence in my engine building and you had a lot of confidence in, in this engine and many people guessed over 400, 500, 600 that's, that's pretty big for a Chevy 350. This is just a 350 bored out 30,000 so it's 355 cubic inches. We got the Pro E Street heads, 1.5 ratio rocker arms with the EFI system on there and the cam is one step above a stock cam. It is a roller, so we did get better performance out of it, but it wasn't designed. This, the goal here wasn't to make tons of horsepower. We want a reliable, very dependable driver engine for a 76 Corvette, and we got that and more. Now, we had about 15 or 20 guesses that were in the 300 range, and only one person came within 4 horsepower. His guess was 335 horsepower. His name is Jamie Witt from Lincoln Park, Michigan. Congratulations, you get the t-shirt and a bottle opener. And of course, other people who are very close, I'll send you, some from, uh, send you a note. You can send me your address and you'll get a bottle opener. I'll send you guys some stuff too. This engine actually put out 331 horsepower at 51 horse, 5100 RPM and torque was 357 foot-pounds. So it really performed great through the entire torque range. Really happy with the way that worked. So. Here's a copy of a dino sheet, and thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.